Well, welcome to the John K Television Station yet again. Uh, Ron and I have got something a little bit different for you, and uh, this is a visit to the Forrester Dean Mechanical Organ Museum. Hello, everybody. Oh. I'm here tonight again. <laughs> Hello there, Ron. Now, we've uh, just had a quick run through of the uh, video, is what we're going to show you this evening. And. Um, Ron hopefully will uh, put me right with some of the uh, information regarding the organs. Now, I believe this is what they call a dance hall organ, isn't it, uh, Ron? Yeah, or, or they used to call them cafe organs. Um, I think it's a decap. I'm not sure, but the sound of it, it sounds rather like that. Apparently, they're very popular in France and Belgium and Holland. Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly got that uh, continental sound to it. Um, we'll see some more close-ups of this a little bit later on, but um, it's all illuminated, so it's a little bit dark in the background at the moment. And um, as I say, we was very, very lucky to find this. Um, my parents used to live up uh, in the Forest of Dean, and um, we picked up a leaflet uh, in one of the local uh, libraries, the Forest of Dean Mechanical Organ Museum. Now, if you work your way out uh, to the Forest of Dean, find your way to Drybrook, and uh, it's not far from there. And uh, I googled it on um, on the internet, and apparently it is still going. It's still listed um, as some of the attractions and things to do in the Forest of Dean. Um, so I do recommend that you go along and have a look at it. So anyway, um, this particular uh, organ plays all the instruments itself. As you can see there, there's the accordion. And uh, when we get a close-up, you'll see the notes actually playing. There's the percussion, the drums. And I still can't remember what those uh, percussion instruments are called. There's, no. a, there's a saxophone on the end. Sorry, Ron. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember what they're called either, John. Mm. But they put them on several of the organs. Yes. Especially the cafe organs. But the... Um, the accordion is very, um, very popular on their organs. Oh, definitely. Let's have a listen to a little bit of the music. Now, I believe these were, uh, were they folded card? Um, that actually uh, created the music, the tunes? Most of them are, yeah, like the concertina hmm. um, paper, yeah. Now, this is, uh, I think you'll find this is a predecessor to the jukebox. Um, very often found in uh, bawdy public houses um, back in those days. And it used to have a slot in the side. I think it was a halfpenny that uh, used to pop in the side of it. And um, this would then play you a tune whilst you were drinking your beer. Or, or gin, I think, uh, was a favourite drink in those days. Yeah, I, th I, think it's, uh, what, I think it's what they called a polyton. Polython. Yeah. That thing whizzing round there, that's that's a speed regulator. It's like a little fan. Um, yeah. it, it keeps it in time. Yeah, they use air, air brakes a lot on these sort of instruments to keep them in time. And the disc itself, um, pluck, pluck the, um, the different length uh, pieces of steel to give you the uh, different notes. Now, also, he's got a collection of old radios, and uh, there's an amplifier. It's called a Cossa. Now, back when I was a mobile disco in 1972, 3 and 4, I had a pair of those, because my disc, mobile disco was stereo. <laughs> now, this is a, uh, a typical uh, barrel organ, which is the uh, thing on the, on the left that was, is actually playing. There's a player piano. We'll see that in action in a moment. Various other musical instruments. Is that a harmonium down there, Ron? I think it is, John. It's mm. not big enough for anything else. True. Oh, we, oh, we see this thing going in a moment. This yeah. is it's, it's very exciting. <laughs> Considering this, this museum's in a, in a private house, the chap certainly stacks the stuff in there. Oh, he certainly does. Here's a gentleman that um, very kindly uh, allowed me to film and uh, his uh, private collection. And uh, unless you knew it was there, you wouldn't. Uh, you'd just drive past it. Um, it's a, a 
quite a nice bungalow, quite a modern bungalow, but out the back um, there's this building that houses his uh, museum collection. Now, it's alright, don't adjust your sets at the moment. <laughs> it, it is dark at the moment. It's just winding up to play the tune and then the lights will start to flash on the uh, various parts of the organ. I do like that accordion. It's brilliant. <laughs> as I say, you can actually see the keys moving as, as it plays it. The gentleman that actually owns the museum is a very interesting person to speak to. I think he's, uh, at that time he'd uh, not long since retired. And um, this was his main hobby. But if he, he just love people to ask him things. Uh, he was a hive of knowledge of uh, all this equipment. Uh, him and a, uh, a partner looked after the uh, stripping down and uh, renovating and rebuilding of all the exhibits that they've got there. You can actually see the piano accordion playing there. Yeah, oh yes, yes, there's the keys. As I say, the, the tunes themselves were, I think it was folded cards with uh, slots and uh, used to work on compressed air. So when the slot uncovered one of the uh, particular ports, it made that uh, note sound at the, at the front or the particular instrument that was playing. Yeah, so, uh, well, some of them they called keyless organs, mm -hmm. which in actual fact, as the slot was uncovered, it, it caused a vacuum which actually opened the valve. Ah, to, right. To so it's the opposite of what I was saying, so it works on a vacuum well, well, it's, and it still pressures pressure. air up, up the tube. Yeah. But um, the actual operation was like a vacuum, worked on a vacuum. Okay. Right, now, starting up this Morris Minor. <laughs> now, I think this is a, 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 a French machine. Um, it looks like a giant musical box, but it, it actually played a, a, a pipe organ. And that rather large um, cylinder, it looks like a tree trunk in there, with the, and it's sort of got like nails banged into it, but they're all in the right place, as you can see, rotating round. I think it might be French, John. Yeah, yeah I think you might be right there. <laughs> and uh, again, there's whirling round there is the uh, air brake, which is uh, keeping the whole thing in time. But um, underneath the winding mechanism, because it has to be all self-contained, uh, as Ron was explaining, the, you'll see it in a moment, the mechanical pumps uh, that pumps uh, air up into the pipes. Also, as I explained, it, it do, does also have a volume control. You'll see the volume control in a moment. It opens all the doors. <laughs> Here he goes. Yeah, this that's something to do with air compression, is it? So, Ron, those yes. things bobbling up and down underneath. Yeah, they're they're actually bellows pumps. So oh, they're pumping the bellows. Pump, yeah, well, they are bellows. Oh, and really? they, there's a one, two, three, five, five sections there yeah. that you can see. Oh, there we which go. Which gives you a constant stream of air. There he goes, opening all the doors. By the way, this uh, museum, um, it's um, detached, <laughs> stands in its own ground, so uh, he hasn't got any neighbours to annoy. <laughs> but uh, this particular machine was uh, completely stripped right the way down, because apparently it was in a right old state when they first found it. and. Um, Another uh, colleague of his uh, does all wood veneering and uh, French polishing. How old is that big 
Yeah, the the cafe organs are quite tame compared to a fairground organ. <laughs> fairground organ can be a bit brash. Oh, definitely. Now, this is the predecessor to your record player. Um, every home should have one. Now, the discs themselves uh, were, were punched. Um, as you can see, he's uh, just changing the disc, changed the tune like you do with a record. And um, wherever the holes are punched, this gives the note that it will play. Clipped over the top. And as Ron says, it's a very unusual winding mechanism. Must work, must work on a wretched of uh, some sort, uh, do you think, Ron? Yeah, I would think so, John. The spring must be on its back in there, I would think, too, the way that... I would have thought so, yeah. They've been scuttled in Stroud, I was just explaining there, that, um, in actual fact there's my mother in the background and uh, just explaining to her um, how they strip these things down, take them completely all to pieces and then put them all back together again. Very soothing music this. Oh it certainly is. As I say, that's the predecessor to the uh, record player. Yeah. There was a smaller version. This is a portable version here. This one you can uh, take take to picnics and things like that. Just take a stack of discs with you and uh, away you go. But as I say, he just loves to exhibit his uh, collection and explain everything about them. Now, um, this here, he's uh, sort of making out that it's uh, it's a sewing machine. And he's, he's actually got a singer sewing machine over the back there with a little puppet on it. Sing. And do you know why he's on there? Do you know why he's on there? He should be up there anyway. Look, I've Off comes the lid, and inside, no, it's not a sewing machine. <laughs> um, it's by the look of it, it's an original Marconi phonograph. Um, played um, cylinders, quite popular for a few years. The only problem was is that it was very limited to how much information could be put on the cylinder as to how long it would play for. And you needed a large cupboard to store the cylinders. They weren't like discs. Well, this is very true. <laughs> they didn't go in slots very well. No, with, um, I've seen them at auction, uh, and they, they fetch quite a bit of money. Yeah. And um, they're in square boxes. Yeah, I don't know. Um, as you say, they're all in boxes. Uh, I don't know how brittle they were. Um, as a oh, cylinder, sure. you know, you had to be a bit careful with them, I would have thought. Oh, he's going to turn the volume up now. There we are. Put the horn on, and there you go. HMV, his master's voice. <laughs> anyway, the dog. <laughs> the do yeah, all you need is the dog. Spot. Was it Spot? The name of the dog? I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, we're nearly to the end of this uh, video clip that I've uh, rescued from uh, some very old uh, camcorder tapes. And I hope you've enjoyed watching it uh, as much as Ron and I have uh, enjoyed putting it together for you. So uh, until the next time, thanks very much indeed, Ron. We'll see you soon. Thank you, John. And we just let the phonograph uh, play us out there. Thanks very much for watching. Grandparents, that was a miracle.